we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed may I humbly say that we gathered you here not to teach you how to be chiefs and queens. How can I possibly teach or school? Elder Nana Pimam Pim Yao Kabri said the fifth how to be a chief. I don't qualify to do that. And I don't qualify to teach you how to be a king or a chief or a queen mother. But we called you here. To remind you that as Christians and royals, our pursuits and priority is to advance the kingdom of God on earth. And that if you and I focus on our calling, and priority by applying the kingdom principles in our spheres Na, we are able to possess the nations that is why we called you so we want you to go with a mindset to change your sphere with the wisdom that God gives. The topic I want to talk on this morning is give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Originally, I had wanted to talk on the topic when you have become a king because I thought I would be starting the delivery. But because I'm closing, I've decided to take this topic, give me wisdom. If it is a see, apart from our need of God and his word, our greatest need as humans is wisdom. Wisdom from above. There are all kinds of wisdom. But the wisdom I intend to discuss is the wisdom that God gives. The wisdom from heaven. James chapter 3. Let's read from verse 13 through 18. We'll be interacting with a lot of scripture. So get your Bibles close to you and then please pay attention. So James chapter 3 from verse 13. Who is wise and understanding amongst you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. But if you have a bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Now, such wisdom, and then the wisdom there is in inverted commas. So it is wisdom. And it is described as such wisdom does not come from heaven, but earthly, unspiritual, 
demonic. So there is some kind of wisdom that is earthly. That is unspiritual. That is demonic. Scripture says that there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. Why is it that the way seems so good to the man? Because it was wrapped in a, a kind of wisdom. But why is it that the end led to death? Because that wisdom is not from heaven. It is demonic. Verse 16. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. Then peace loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, and good fruit, impartial, sincere, peace makers who sow in peace reaping harvests of righteousness. See, this nation is flooded with all kinds of chieftaincy disputes. Some are dead for over a decade. They have not been buried just because the kind of wisdom that is ruling is not from heaven. We need a wisdom from above in managing the affairs of life. See, our personal lives and the lives of the constituents we survey we need wisdom to manage our personal lives and the lives of the people we survey. But we need the consciousness that we need wisdom to manage the world system so we can look for it. The, if the consciousness is not there, we don't look for it. But when we see that we need it, then we look for it. See, life is full of challenges. Or how Abusuwa Abrabum. And as a result, we are always confronted with decision making. We need to take decisions to move on, otherwise, we will remain static. See, decisions could be simple or complex. Because challenges come. In weights. Some are weightier. The need for wisdom becomes critical when you lead people. The leader's decision has a ripple effect on the whole constituents. He surveys. You see, we have all been elevated to be kings, chiefs, queen mothers, chairmen, general secretaries to solve tough problems. There was a picture of a queen in a palanquin. 
Now, this fellow is elevated. But you see, you have been elevated to solve difficult problems. And so, to answer tough questions and meet on common needs. You see, Israel asks for a king. Israel asks for a king and they did so for a reason. Israel for Ebisa Ohene. Now what was sent to Bintia will be Sa Ohene. Now so let's go and examine why they asked for a king and what they were looking for. Now Yam Kony and Koshe, the entire will be Sa Ohene, any they are not watching. First Samuel chapter eight. Some will make the kind of watch. Now I'll read nineteen and twenty. Making kind of chemu don't crony a dunu. But the people refused to listen to Samuel. Now Omano and Penisa would hear Samuel. No, they said. Now Derby, we want a king over us. Now na oni Then we will be like all the other nations. And now let's pay attention. With a king to lead us. And to go out before us and fight our battles. So the Israel's reason for asking for a king was to have someone who will lead them and he said, go before them and fight their battles. When we are talking about battles, say you can't occur. We are talking about conflicts or struggles. Yeah, can't mean to me who I say any uh apidi apidi. The conflict within and conflict without. Mean to me who I say a war you move any mean to me who I say a war you change. The struggles that your natives are facing. Apidi apidi ya won't mind for Asia. So you are made a king. It's a yaya wa hene. You have been made a queen to deal with your subjects' conflicts. And their struggles, in addition to your own battles, it is this huge tax that drove Solomon to ask God for wisdom. Second Chronicles chapter 1. From verse 7, please. Are we together? If you are here, let me see your hand. Sorry, from verse 7. That night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon said God, You have shown great kindness to David my father and have made me king in his place. Now, Lord God, let your promise to my father David be confirmed. For you have made me king over a people who are as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me wisdom and knowledge. Now, I want you to pay attention. If you can read, let's read together. Ready, go. Give me wisdom and knowledge. You see the comma? Now, what is it for? Let's read. That I may lead these people. For who is able to govern these great people of yours? So, the reason for asking for wisdom and was that he would govern God's people. The next verse. 
God said to Solomon, Since this is your heart desire, and you have not asked for wealth, possession, or honor, nor for the death of your enemies, and since you have not asked for long life, but for wisdom and knowledge to govern my people over whom I have made you king. Therefore, wisdom and knowledge I will give you. And I will also give you wealth, possessions, and honor. Such as no king who was before you ever had and none after you will have. And now, just to put it in human terms, I will say that the request of Solomon surprised God. Surprise in inverted commas. Because it is unusual. It's not the normal way. Now, sometimes somebody becomes king, and the next week, everyone who is living on the land, if you have bought the land, you have to rebuy it. If we say, and ya dear, what are ye? A toddy be obey ya or henia. A de chain ya, what what was as a bia one in my mono, as I said, was saying, a bedia no ton of fro. They came for worth. But leadership is responsibility. Leadership is responsibility. Leadership is work. Leadership is not showmanship. So sometimes when you were king or you were queen, if you don't take care, your, your, your biggest problem will be buying buying clothes, buying the latest, weave the latest for me because it's about how you clad yourself in your kente cloth. But leadership is not showmanship. Leadership is not Power. enye to me. Leadership is not worth. Akenye enya ahunya. Leadership is not fame. Akenye enye se ubenya din. It's not to make your enemies fear you. Enye se ubema watam for ehu esuro. And your friends admire you. Now we now for ebe tawu do mountain time. These could be privileges that leadership. Gives, but we don't dwell on that. Leadership is responsibility. Leadership is not to pay back your enemies. You see, the very day I was elected as the chairman, somebody drew me aside and brought an apology, a plea from a pastor. Obi ekri mi jina nchen na odi chao pa obi e jani atu anu e de breme. Osofu e jani atu anu e de breme. Because of how he has treated me in the past. Ena mkwanya ofaso e ne metina emrea e krim. But I was not put on the seat as a chairman to pay back enemies. Nanso, yam famia metina akonyo imu se gwe mtre ni se me metu ya matamfo eka. But you see, I have been given authority. Now, so your mommy to me, and I can pay back enemies. Now, me to me to a time for soccer. But the authority that I have, now, so to me, I'm a one is to build up and he said, me buani pama, not to destroy. Now, yes, I may be say, Yes, you can, yeah, my answer, oh, shall we rise?
I want to say that leadership is responsibility. Responsibility is responsibility. That is a combination of two words, response and ability. So when you are made a king, when you are made a chief, when you are made a queen, you should have the ability to respond to difficult questions, tough problems, and uncommon needs. I said I was not put on the seat as a chairman to pay back enemies. But you see, I have been given authority. And I can pay back enemies. But the authority that I have is to build up not to destroy. Yesu ka yeho my answer oh shall we rise please I want to say that leadership is responsibility. Responsibility is responsibility. That is 
a combination of two words response and ability so when you are made a king when you are made a chief when you are made a queen you should have the ability to respond to difficult questions tough problems and uncommon needs it's not showmanship. It's not show me how to front we put on cloth. Shall we lift our hands if you can? Oh, no. mm. see upon us. Give us wisdom. Give us wisdom that we will be able to lead your people. Amen. 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 Shall we please have us? Amen. God responded to Solomon's request. Solomon, God gave him wisdom. And gave him what he didn't even ask for. First Kings chapter 4. I read from 29. First Kings 4 29. Now, the Bible says that God gave Solomon wisdom now, and very great insights. A breath of understanding as measureless as the sun on the seashore. Solomon's wisdom Solomon was greater than the wisdom of all the people of Egypt. And greater than all the wisdom of Egypt put together. Yes. He was wiser than anyone. Yes. Including Ethan. Ethan. The Ezra. Ezra. Wiser than Heman. Any Heman. Kako. Any Kako. Dada. Any dada. The sons of Mahal. Ah, well, yeah, Mahel, Mano. See, these names that have been mentioned. They were kings. Na they were not priests. Na they were not prophets. Na so this wisdom is not ecclesiastical. Some of them were singers in David's choir. But God gave them wisdom. This morning, may the Lord grant you the wisdom that we need. For more nations, people came to listen to Solomon's wisdom. Sent by all the kings of the world. Who had heard of his wisdom? Why do we need wisdom? As leaders. Because wisdom is the principal thing. If he say wisdom is the principal thing. 
the highest rank of all human desires, needs, is wisdom. It is the most important thing that we need. And only dear, in here, kesi pa in here. Its benefits are most desirable. Na infaswa e waso no edo so para. Nothing you desire can be compared to wisdom. Bi bi biare ni wa wo hushere na wokra kondo a ubetu mi dia tutu nyansa. Proverbs chapter four. Me busem eti enai. Proverbs chapter four. Me busem eti nai. Shall we read from verse five to thirteen? Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Now look at the next verse. Do not forsake wisdom. For she will protect you. If he said, Now, if you need real protection, it is a It's not to go for an idol or a juju. Wisdom will protect you. And she will watch over you. The next verse. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Cherish her. Cherish her. When he say her, he is talking about the wisdom, not God, because God is not referred to as her. It to be cherish him. But once you hear cherish her, then he's talking about the wisdom. And she will exalt you. Embrace her, embrace wisdom. And she will honor you. She will give you a gallard of grace. A gallard to grace your head and present you with glorious crown. Listen, my son. Accept what I say. The eye here is what wisdom says. And the years of your life will be many. The years of your life will be many. Proverbs chapter 3. From verse 13. Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 13. From verse 13. Shall we read together? Yes. Verse 13. Blessed are those who find those who gain understanding. For she is more profitable than silver. And yields better returns and gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare to her. See, when you see wisdom coming, the Bible says a long life is in his right hand. And in his left hand are riches and honor. In the right hand of wisdom is long life. In his left hands are riches and honor. Some people are rich. But they are not honorable. Because of how they gain their wealth. But wisdom will bring you riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways. And all her paths are peace. Na na say na ya sumdwe. Na kwenye na. Aye. Aye. Oh aye. 